Army of the Dead, Army of Thieves, Rebel Moon Part 1, and Rebel Moon Part 2. Zack Snyder last four projects have been made to stinkers to say the least. Averaging a mere 5.87 on IMDb, 42.75 on Rotten Tomatoes, and extremely bad ratings on Letterboxd. Safe to say things aren't looking any good for him. I really don't know how he manages to do this but I think we can unanimously agree that we have sadly moved on from his peak years of him giving us bangers after bangers, halt classics, and are now unfortunately witnessing his downfall as a movie maker. And by the way, this is just judging his quality of movies based on metrics by audience and critics reception. It's impossible to gauge if these movies will be box office hits or flops because they are all released straight to Netflix. But judging from history, Zack's movies have a tendency of having a good opening and massive second weekend drop all attributed to a bad word of mouth. And these were averagely better received movies than the ones he's been making lately. Alright, we got a lot to talk about in this video. So let's dive in. Aku! I said this before in my earlier video but I might as well say it again, Zack Snyder has too much power and too much control in his recent flops. Looking at this basic hierarchy chart of a film crew, it's evident who's the actual final boss in a film production. A director's true purpose is controlling the artistic vision of a movie and guide the talent and crew to bring the script to life. However, the producers actually call all the shots like ordering reshoots, keeping the directors in check, being answerable to the studio and most importantly making sure everything is on track and the film doesn't go over budget and sticks to the schedule. Think of how all the three Back to the Future movies were directed by Robert Zemeckis but a lot of its success is attributed to Steven Spielberg or how the Indiana Jones movies were directed by Steven Spielberg but are all overseen and heavily produced by his longtime buddy George Lucas or how Jason Bloom has never directed a single movie but we know what we're getting into when we see the Blumhouse logo at the beginning of a horror movie. Producers call the shot. Zack Snyder being the sole producer of a lot of his recent movies means he is calling all the shots. This has proven to be a complete disaster because with no one to put him in check, we get to see him unleash a darker side ever before seen in his career that can only be described as smug, masturbatory filmmaking. When I heard that Zack Snyder was going to carry on with this gimmick of over-reliance on director's cut on his movies, I wasn't really surprised because I mean this is Zack Snyder, literally that's his shtick. But when I heard that during principal photography, the cast and crew were forced to shoot two different movies at the same time, an R-rated director's cut version with different dialogue, different scenes and more violent and different from the PG-13 scenes that we are getting released a whole freaking six months before, I knew something was fucking wrong with this guy. Get this. Two movies were shot simultaneously back to back to accommodate the ego of this guy. And the worst part was Netflix fully allowed and supported this. Get this, Netflix is actually going out of its way to set aside millions of dollars to not only finish a different cut of these movies, all with new VFX, new dialogue, new bloodier action and sex scenes, but also heavily market it. Six freaking times. Assuming they don't come to their senses midway and change their mind and see what kind of bullshit they're pulling. This has never before happened in Hollywood and the idea that this is all being done to accommodate one man's massive delusion and grandeur is appalling. The amount of smug oozing from this move from Zack Snyder has never before been seen in history of Hollywood. I mean don't get me wrong, I mean don't get me wrong, I know we all came to accept the fact that Netflix isn't actually a movie studio at heart. It's a tech company that provides content disguised as a movie studio. It's all about who brings the most numbers in terms of paying subscribers and watch time, regardless of quality. That's why extremely good shows with little viewership like Mindhunter and I'm not okay with this get cancelled and we keep getting damn Ryan Reynolds action movies and well, two different versions of one Zack Snyder movie. Netflix as a distributor has indirectly enabled the gradual decline of Zack Snyder and that's just the behind the scenes part. Let's look at the actual finished products of his movies. Aku! Don't get me wrong, I like slow mos in movies as much as the next guy because it gives us some epic movie shots. Throughout his filmography, Zack has been known as the slow mo guy, like in 300, Watchmen, and Justice League. Most of the time, it was used right to serve the story and complement the film. Kinda like how we have Bayhem by Michael Bay and Wes Anderson's colorful cinematography and Nolan's over reliance on practical effects over CGI. Zack was the slow mo guy in Hollywood. But here's the thing he kinda took it a bit too far and went overboard lately. And I'm not even making this up. The run time in the second Rebel Moon movie can be slashed by up to 20 minutes if we remove the unnecessary slow mos. In case you didn't know, on top of being the writer, producer, 
and director. Zack Snyder was actually the cinematographer in these movies. One of the glaring in your face stuff I easily noticed is the weird color palette he uses, the low saturated shots and a very shallow depth of field. Sure all these movies look like this but once again there was a level of control. Someone actually put him on a leash and told him yo slow the fuck down. I mean look at Man of Steel for instance, easily his greatest movie. The action scenes were gorgeous, the Krypton scenes were a work of art and the slow motion made sense. Almost as if using something sparingly and only when necessary is actually a good thing. Rebel Moon color grading does not look good at all. Low depth of field in his zombie movies look even worse. It's not like Zack Snyder doesn't know any of this. I mean, he did graduate from film school and was a cinematographer for years doing commercials before becoming a movie director. He did give us visually looking masterpieces like Watchmen. The main reason Zack suddenly went rogue and became too self-indulgent is because he, he has too much freedom. Freedom to shoot two versions of a movie, freedom to be hands on everything and freedom to say anything he wants because he has been enabled. He has too much power. As Eric Cartman will say, he has too much authority. 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 Let's face it. Zack Snyder is not a screenwriter. For fuck's sake, all his screenplays suffer the same old basic rookie mistakes. Poor story structure, very weak second act, poorly written protagonist, very basic dialogue. Like a great director once said, there's a difference between a writer director and a director. Let me reuse a clip from an old video to prove a point. Is David Fincher. But he's not in the same category as me because I'm a writer director and that makes it different. That makes it a different. And it's a lot easier to go and look at the scripts that are out there and available and you can maybe work with a writer or do a little rewrite or do that kind of thing. Zach's persistence to continuously keep writing mediocre scripts worse than Drake distracts will be his biggest downfall. His greatest movies happen to have screenplays not written by him. Watching Zach writing a script is almost as painful as Lilo enduring his rock face in the late 2000s. It's <laughs> This nigga should be arrested for vandalism for all the bricks he's throwing in the name of movie scripts. The biggest question I always ask myself after seeing a damn movie like Sucker Punch and Army of the Dead, were there any script doctors hired before these movies were greenlit? Was there any form of committee or a panel that, I don't know, read the script and were like, yo, this nigga is full of shit. This is bad because Zack is always in a constant state of defense whenever he's called out on his bad movies out of honest criticism. Not only that, he is also in a constant state of delusion, thinking a 3 hour extended R rated super duper director's cut is how all movies should be. He vats blames to focus groups and ends up saying dumb shit like Rebel Moon will solo Babenheimer at the box office. <laughs> <laughs> no seriously, he actually said that, check this out. All of this will be avoided if he wasn't too proud to admit he cannot write a cohesive story and just hire a good and competent screenwriter. There was a scene that best describes how bad of a screenwriter Zack actually is. is his tendency to leave important plot points hanging, the irrelevant scenes that should not even be in the movie remain there, and living in irrelevant scenes that should not even be in the movie to begin with. Every time Baby Doll was fighting those monsters, what were the stakes? What would happen if let's say she lost again? the monster. What was the point on all this? In Army of the Dead, he hints the zombies are sentient beings, can communicate, have civilization and can reproduce. This was never followed up in any way whatsoever. This baby inside her seemed to be an interesting plot point that led to absolutely nowhere. What was the point? In Rebel Moon Part 2, when everyone was seated down going around telling each other's backstory, on the eve of the war, what purpose did this scene accomplish? I for certainly couldn't give two shits for any of them because a one minute exposition of how your past was tragic and why you hate the bad guys isn't enough for me. Have you heard of a basic storytelling trope that goes, show, don't tell. Show me why you lost your arm and how your life changed after you lost it. Show me how you were an emperor and how your life changed after you got overthrown and your mother died. Show me why you decided to follow an execution order. For fuck's sake, stop telling me what happened in a 40 second exposition montage mixed with a slow motion overload. Show me. Don't tell me. I will take a 15 minute backstory of the fall of this guy's kingdom. Any day of an unnecessary montage of people harvesting grains, someone drinking water, children playing, and this bunch of nobodies playing violins. Seriously, pause the video and tell me what the hell was the purpose of these people who were playing violins in this execution. As a screenwriter, get your priorities straight and focus on building your characters. Give them depth, give them character acts, remove unnecessary scenes and for heaven's sake, please stop insulting your audience. Make it easier for me to defend you. Come on, I'm really trying here. Look, do I hate Zack Snyder? No. No I don't. I think he's a cool guy in person from his interviews and I believe that at the end of it all he just loves making movies and he's a big comic book nerd just like the rest of us. Zack Snyder the guy 
this guy is cool but Zack Snyder the filmmaker fuck this guy I am done defending him I am done giving him a pass for all his mistakes for all his stupid decisions in his movies for all his weird fetishes of unnecessary slow-mo low saturation for all his excuses and all his delusions that a director's cut is necessary for all his god complexes I am done I was a big Snyder diehard fan I was a member of the Snyder cult I campaigned for this I defended all these DCU movies one thing is clear I was wrong Man of Steel and BVS were good because Christopher Nolan wrote the script and was the producer to keep him in check not to go overboard with his insanity none of the dead and watchmen were good because he was not the screenwriter more competent people were there to put him on a leash and bring out the best in him 300 was good because he was under a tight budget and had no room to shoot unnecessary scenes not in the comics unnecessary indulgence in his own delusions and prolonging the runtime Zack fails when he has too much power and believes in his own hype and that's not an opinion looking at his track record this is in no way an opinion Dear Zack Snyder, if you're ever going to watch this, it's okay to ask for help from a well-established screenwriter like David Goyer, James Gunn, Chris Terrio to help you bring out the best version of your movie. I mean, better directors than you have made classics from screenplays not written by them. It's okay to have your script revised by a script doctor. It's okay to listen to constructive criticism from YouTubers like Nad Roddick and The Critical Drinker. You are not a screenwriter. You are not a cinematographer. You are a director. A damn good one for that matter. For fuck's sake, Zack Snyder, get your shit together it's really getting impossible to finish your movies it's okay to ask for help